morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Transportation uh, Committee meeting uh, for uh, Wednesday, the 4th of September. It's our first uh, meeting back uh, from the summer. Welcome back. Hope everyone enjoyed uh, a restful period off. Uh, I have no regrets uh, for the meeting. Are there any declarations of interest? Seeing no declarations of interest. Uh, confirmation of the minutes from the uh, 5th of June, 2019. Carried. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, communications, we have uh, response to inquiries about uh, pavement markings. Oh, I guess we need to approve the agenda. Um, so we actually have a motion to add an item to the agenda. Councillor uh, Judas. Thank you, uh, Councillor Blay, Chair Blay. Um, yes, I wanted to, uh, to seek permission of my colleagues on, on committee to add an item in respect to crossing guards. Did you want me to read it out right now? Okay, perfect. That the rules of procedure be suspended to consider the following motion in order to initiate the implementation of the six additional warranted crossing guard locations in a timely manner as the 2019 school year has already started. Whereas the City of Ottawa provides crossing guards for children going to elementary schools at intersections that meet the city's criteria as posing a risk to the safety of children crossing, and whereas city staff have studied the necessity for crossing guards at warranted intersections for the 2019-2020 school year and determined that 16 intersections currently meet the city's criteria and therefore warrant a crossing guard, and whereas staff have indicated that only 10 new locations will be implemented for the 2019-2020 school year in accordance with the growth funding provided for in the 2019 budget and anticipated to be included in the 2020 budget. And whereas funding only 10 of the 16 crossing guards does not align with the current needs in the community to ensure children's safe travel to and from schools. And whereas council is not permitted to pre-commit funds in advance of the tabling and adoption of the 2020 budget. Therefore, it be resolved that the Transportation Committee recommend Council approve the implementation of the six additional warranted school crossing guard locations for the remainder of the 2019 budget year with the one-time cost of $33,000 to be funded from the Tax Stabilization Reserve and be it further resolved that Council direct staff to review options for funding all warranted crossing guard positions for the remainder of this school year and report back with recommendations as part of the 2020 draft budget process, including recommendations on how to fund crossing guard positions for a full year going forward, taking into account that the school year and annual budget cycle do not align. Uh, so is adding this to the agenda carried? Yes. Carried. Is there any need to discuss this? Is the item carried? Yes. Carried, thank you very much. Thank item, you. item number one, congratulations, Councillor. Item number one is the Jockville Road Multi-Use Pathway rail, rail Grade Separation Environmental Assessment EA Study uh, Recommendations. Uh, Councillor Fleury has some questions, and so we do have a presentation which uh, we will now like to see. We didn't read it. Or, we'll, so we'll come back to that in uh, just a moment. Uh, Linda Lee Village Centennial Commemorative Signage. I don't see Councillor King, but this is not at all controversial as is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, Glebe, Old Ottawa South. Councillor, do you uh, presume you want to speak to this? And uh, I think you probably should. Unless, is this going to be carried unanimously? Yeah? Okay, wonderful. Item number three, carried. So, we'll go back to Jockville Road. Thank you, Ms. Chief. Uh, Councilor Fleury said he doesn't need the presentation, so I think he just has some questions he, he'd like to ask. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, I, I do have questions because that's uh, it's a it's a situation that's uh, quite challenging, where we have a rail crossing at gar uh, at grade, where there's multi multiple uses that are crossing. We've had uh, tragic incidents there, and. Uh, usually I know that you and your team plan ahead of time to make sure that those don't happen and when they do happen that we react and I I feel that was what was what is presented is aspirational rather than implement it, than implementing it so could we get some comments I know that you you're looking for around seven million dollars but why don't we have uh, 
wh why don't we, uh, why isn't it more prioritized to just implement uh, those changes? Through you, Chair. Um, this project wasn't identified in when we did the transportation master plan back in 2013. A lot of things have changed since then in terms of uh, um, how we prioritize uh, active transportation. And it's all, this project also stemmed from the review of um, all the rail crossings uh, with transit primarily, and this one has a road crossing with Jockville. Um, Jockville rate crest, uh, rate, um, rail grade separation isn't needed for some time yet, but then beside it is this uh, multi-use pathway. So we did identify the need to do this sooner than later through that uh, study of about um, a year or so ago. Um, that's why we started this EA study, so that we have a project and we can start planning for its implementation. Right now it's not funded, but we are doing a TNP review and we will this will now become part of that plan. So when you say this will become part of that plan, when are the, what, when's a hopeful implementation uh, of, of that fix? Uh, that's still, um, a, some, we need some time to look at the, the funding that's available to the city for the different programs and that'll all come into the network planning and the network includes this component as well. But in the, uh, there are some interim improvements that we can make uh, to improve the safety in this area and it's identified in the report and that's about $70,000. That we can probably do very soon. We just have to uh, work through the operational requirements and get on with that right away. So just to clarify, these, these changes that you're proposing the plan would, uh, would resolve any interaction between the different modes? Um, yeah, for walking and cycling would be in there because it's a multi-use pathway, but the key component is the uh, separation of that from uh, the rail, the train service going through. And what's the uh, federal, like tra what's Transport Canada's duty relating to that? I mean, they regulate the rail, uh, we operate the road network, and then there's a conflict. So. Who, who is to pay for those upgrades and how can we accelerate it? Like, it, it, the way we're presenting it is it's a city's fix and we're hopeful that at some point we can do it when, you know, we, we've, we as a collective have lived through that, the tragic incidents that have happened at that location. How do we, uh, as a committee, put our minds to it and, and advocate and, and get the funding that's needed? Uh, that's a very good question, Councillor, and it's a big issue for um, the for Transport Canada as well because there are many um, rail uh, at grade crossings throughout the country. So this is not uh, something that um, they have an answer for right now, but it's something that we will continue to pursue as we look for funding sources to implement this project. I would also like to clarify that the accident uh, was at the um, at the fallow field. Um, corner of uh, Fallowfield Park and Ride, and it's not here at Jockville. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Harder. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I wrote a very strange for me, strangely for me, but a very long-winded comment where I just kind of rambled on and on, and it is out of a sense of frustration, really. Um, you know, this is, uh, and in it I said there's 19. We're up to 26 trains a day that go through there. And with this crossing, it's unique in the fact that where, if you think about Barhaven and the, and the Via train, the track, it goes like this. Except as you cross this, this crossing, it goes like this and around a bend. So when you stand there, and actually somebody from CTV, I think, was out there and taking a picture, and I said, you notice you can see all the way to Fallowfield Station, uh, if you look to the east, northeast, but if you look to the southwest, you don't see very far. Look at, we've been lucky for many years. It's a very well used pathway. Um, it has been since, since there since the 80s. And uh, we have added other pedestrian cycling underpasses. Uh, we have three other ones, the one that connects community parts of Barhaven very well. But we have 90,000 people plus, so we're actually about 95,000 people that live in Barhaven now. This goes through the middle of it, where their people are going shopping, they're going to church, they're going to schools, uh, they're on scooters, there's a, an assist, assisted living um, um, dwelling apartments units right beside the, the church, which is on the other side of the road, which is, has a ditch. It is problematic for the volume of traffic 
all I wanted was something that would take care of and benefit the opportunity right now. And as I said in my, in my comments, safety should trump something at some time. And in this case, it's the one that the people are crossing all the time, and they're not, and I'm talking about, you know, I'm not talking about in cars. This, people are going in cars. We also have along there, we have, we have that, but we also have three roundabouts on that part of Jossdale, uh, with another one waiting until we have some money to make it safer too. So we're consciously thinking about those kind of things. I know Phil Landry's team has put in um, chevrons, and they've done all kinds of stuff. But this is, the neat thing about this pathway is it's isolated from Jossville. It's not just beside it, it actually is isolated. And I think that's why it's been safe. And back in the Nepean days, we actually put up a little mini rail crossing on the pathway side. What I was hoping for was something that would be a solution for now, and not necessarily take in 40 years from now when we might have the money to put in the great separation. To think that the government's going to give us money, they gave us nothing, nothing for Green Bank for that great separation. This city spent, paid for all of it, and we paid about 56 million to 60 million dollars for that one underpass. Currently, over the next two, three years, we're going to be doing an overpass on Strandherd over the Via Track there with no help from anybody financially. This to me, if we were to implement the kind of underpass we have that goes over to Pierre Elliott Trudeau to six schools, Mother Teresa, Longfield, Davidson Heights, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, Mikel Jean, St. Luke's, a 33-acre uh, Ken Ross Park with all the sports that goes on there, would be a, 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 a huge advantage, I think, on the safety. And yeah, fortunately, we haven't had anybody hurt there. And I think we've done everything we can in exception of this. But the huge, the, the big cost of this is because we're looking at it as VB, as Miss Cheese team has to do at the at the final build out. And the final build out for that grade separation is going to include moving water lines and, and things like that. If you don't factor that in, understanding that that is decades away, then maybe there's an opportunity to do it faster for the pedestrians and the cyclists, which would encourage, I think, more of them. If, you know, as a, as a mom who had little kids growing up when I first was in Barhaven, and now they have little kids, some of them that just live down the road that are like in grade one and grade three, I would be more confident in saying to them, yes, you can go over to Susie's house on Tartan Drive from my house on Cannavale by using that. That's where the crossing would be. I would be more confident in that. I don't think I, I know that I wouldn't be without me going with them. So that's why I went into the long rant. Thanks for letting me speak on this. You know, there isn't a solution today unless we start thinking differently. And I think that we have to prioritize safety, and I think that we have to look at, uh, you know, the money that we invested, for example, in the EA for the Chapman Mills BRT, which, it's, which is in, in the plans not till 2040 something. You know, how about we take care of the real things right now? And this is something that we could do. In 1992, we had a seven-year-old boy that was killed crossing the tracks just down the road. We put a tunnel in, Nepean put a tunnel in under those tracks. So obviously, it's not a doom and gloom thing for me because I, you know, I'm aware of it constantly. I'm always thinking about it. But this was an opportunity because we were doing these crossings that I thought that might be an opportunity to think differently and think smaller and deal with what the situation was. So thank you for, my, uh, for allowing me to rant. And thanks, uh, Matt, for holding it. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Dean. Well, um, Councillor Harder's uh, ward is in a very unique situation with all of those crossings, and uh, it does create some significant safety challenges. I think we're all very aware of them. Um, so I, I was listening to what Councillor Harder had to say about um, lower cost solution that would address pedestrian and cycling issues. And I'm wondering if that's a possibility. Like we can't always go for the whole thing. Obviously we don't have enough money. But she makes a very good point. 
that um, there is a safety issue that we're aware of. As a municipality, it would be in all of our interests to find a way to address it. And, you know, I can think of other underpasses in the city that deal with pedestrian and cyclists. So is there an opportunity to find a low cost solution that would create a, a more safe crossing for pedestrian and cycling and uh, cyclists in Barhaven? Uh, Councillor, we, um, when we did this project, we looked at the, the cost and uh, the team did look at how ways to, to tighten it up more. This is not about protection for a future road uh, grade separation 20, 30, 40 years from now. Um, the, it, it costs the way it costs because it's at grade right now and we have to go underneath. And as we go underneath, there's a major sewer line that's right at eye level. So that has to be relocated because of the grade separation. The other um, underpasses in further along the line in Barhaven, they were completed back in the 1990s. And in those locations, particularly where that, uh, that boy- The Dolan. Yes. Um, the, the grade of the tracks are already higher up. So there was opportunity to punch through at, uh, at lower cost. And the, um, the sewer line at that location was even below that. So it's, it's very unique to this location that caused uh, the project cost to be what it is. Um, and with an active rail line, we, I think we have a window of opportunity to work on this um, during, during the construction. So it's recommended that it be a prefab structure built somewhere else, brought in and worked very quickly to get into place. Um, it is about eight meters to the west of the existing line just because of uh, sight lines and everything else. And that was not because of the, the future um, road grade separation. And, uh, and there was also the connections to the other east-west pathways through there. So th it's very unique to the site. And we're very um, conscious of project costs because uh, we're not trying to build a, uh, a super design here. It's, it's what's practical and what, what is safe. So have you done cost estimates on what that would cost just to do the pedestrian and cyclist underpass? Sorry, the question was? Have you done a cost estimate on what it would cost to do a pedestrian and cyclist underpass only as a temporary measure? Uh, uh, this, uh, yeah, yeah. What, uh, I don't know what the temporary would mean because there's still that pipe that's in the way. So perhaps we can um, do away with some landscaping, uh, some other things, but th th some of these smaller items could be addressed during detailed design. But we're, we're doing an EA now to show you the order of magnitude for this project and what it would encompass. If we want to take away some of the elements um, that are not absolutely needed, like the connections to the other pathways, we can look into that during detailed design. Okay. Mr. Harder. So I did not mention the fact that there are, uh, on either side of this via line, there are two parallel to the line pathways, one on the north side, one on the south side. There is at the other end of it, so at the strand, at uh, Cedarview Road end, which is almost a stranded, there is another underpass there that goes to Clark Fields. I think in this case, because of the, of the, of the sewer line, I mean, I think that the opportunity would be to avoid the sewer line. And so, but I think the complication is because VIA has so many rules and Transport Canada has so many rules about the way that they must do it. I mean, I lived through that with the Green Bank an, uh, grade separation, you remember, I mean, just a little thing which would drove people crazy was the blowing of the whistle for months, the dynamiting and everything else. But to have this almost to carry like structure that they would put in place because it's easier for VIA, again, and easier for transportation rules, again, that, that complicates it. But if you were to avoid that and to have it come like that, I'd like to see what that looked like. We're not driving vehicles under it we're you know taking bus anyway I think it's enough conversation for today I don't think it's going to get us anywhere I was looking for highlighting the opportunity for safety um, for other than than vehicles really in this case it's about the people it's about the people that aren't in the car 
aren't on the bus, aren't in the truck, but absolutely are on foot, pushing buggies, in scooters, uh, seniors. Uh, we have uh, seniors residents in the area. We have 27 schools. I'd say six of them are impacted by this one crossing. We have two churches that counterbalance the uh, crossing. Um, it's not something that's gonna go away, but the way that if we, we're forced to go with, we have to move the pipe and we can't look at anything else, then we are in the position where I don't see it being done. It certainly won't be done in my lifetime, which is, which is unfortunate. Okay, thank you uh, very much, Councillor. Anyone else wish to speak? Um, so is uh, item number one, the Jockville Road Multi-Use Pathway ra Rail Grade Separation Environmental Assessment Study Recommendations 1 and 2 carried? Carried. Uh, thank you very much. Um, there are no in-camera items. Are there any notices of motion? Seeing notice, no notice of motion, we do have one inquiry. Councillor Hubler. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Uh, my inquiry is, please provide a report on what the City of Ottawa is doing to explore alternatives such as hot in place, recycled asphalt, and micro uh, resurfacing, to name a few options. With the potential savings and extended surface life these opportunities uh, provide, I don't think we can afford to ignore the opportunities. So I'd like to see what the staff are doing about uh, using those. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. There's no other business. Adjournments. Next meeting is not the 3rd of July, 2019, but I'm sure is sometime in October. Enjoy, uh, enjoy the month. Thank you.